black men murders as marketing. This is a profound conversation, so I'm going to walk it really slow because it could be inflammatory for some, but it's an important one to have because if you don't understand how marketing works, you won't understand how you're being used. Hello, I'm Dr. Venus, your hot mess millionaire. And um, we've had some situations um, recently that are um, obviously upsetting, okay? But I don't wanna talk about the murders of black men and women, but specifically black men. I don't wanna talk about the murders. That's not what I'm after, okay? I, the good news is I have in the notes, I've included a number of resources, articles around the details of of two specific murders, okay? Um, and I, and, and well, let me just do it this way. I'm gonna walk you through, I'm gonna walk you through the articles just so you can get a sense of what we're talking about today, but the frame it, let me give you a context. What we're talking about is marketing. We're not talking about morality, okay? Please understand that. I'm not doing moral, I'm doing marketing. I'm always talking about marketing or money. Even though I'm rooted it in history, lived experience, social activism, social change. In the end, what I'm really pointing to is, if you do not have your own money, if you don't know how to market, then you will be a slave. You'll be a slave to other people's agendas, to other people's um, temperaments, to other people's wants and desires. You become a tool for their pleasure. And I'm not okay with that. So what I'm focusing on in this particular conversation is not the murders. I'm pointing to how people are marketing the murders to elevate their platforms, to redeem themselves in the social atmosphere, to make a name for themselves. And this is not a moral conversation. So please do not come for me with moral because you will get some fucking smoke. I'm trying not to curse. I've been talking to God about it. We'll see how long it lasts. Okay. So I want to make sure I say that. So now I'm going to cover right now what I'm going to do just to frame this. I'm going to, I'm going to read you the title of the eight articles that I'm including this week. And I encourage you, if you want to be, if you want to really think beyond what the media is feeding you, read the articles. Every time I do, every time I do one of these episodes, I include resources so you can have your own revelation. You got to take my word for it. You really don't. I don't want you to. Don't believe me. Read, believe yourself. Read for yourself. Decide for yourself. I'm not trying to be your Messiah, but I will bring a message that will help you be an informed consumer and an extraordinary businesswoman and man. Okay. So the first article is called Know Their Names. Black people killed by police. This is important. If you don't understand the history of police murders, at least from two, 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 at least for the last five to seven years, then you won't understand why this has so much weight, specifically after George Floyd. Okay, and we can go all the way back to Rodney King. Hell, we can go back to Emmett Timmett. Emmett Timmett. I can't even say people's name today. God fix it. We can go back. Okay, but I just want you to actually get informed so you understand why this is so heady in this season okay um an la times article call is called a very abbreviated history of police officers killing black people this is wonderful in that it shows you the current in 2020 and there's a lot of the headline cases they didn't put sandra bland in there which i'm a little i got some things about that but i want you to know what we're talking about i'm not going to take the time to educate you you're a grown person and I trust you when you have the resource, you'll do that, okay? The third article is um, Brandon Bernard executed. Man youngest up to die in, die in seven decades by lethal injection. Brandon Bernard, 40, um, 40 years old, was put to death on Thursday at a prison in Terre Haute, Indiana, despite pleas from Kim Kardashian West to stop killing. We'll come back to that one, okay? The fourth article, Kim Kardashian says she's so messed up after execution of Brandon Bernard. This has, this just has to change. We'll come back to that. Protest signs, by, check this out. Protest signs, protest, protest signs by artists and celebrities sold to benefit families of black women killed by police. Now, I want you to be very clear. This is a good thing. Please hear my word. This is good stuff. So I am not suggesting in any way, shape or form that any of the things I'm talking about are bad, malicious, or, um, or shady. 
I'm not saying that. I just want you to understand how marketing works. Because if you don't understand how marketing works, you'll, you're going to get played. They will push your emotions. Look, I'm a marketer. Be clear. There's a way to, to say something to get a response that's so visceral, you stop thinking. And I'll show you a couple of them, okay? At least one. Um, the, um, the sixth resource is which, celeb which celebrities advocated for the release of the West Memphis Three, okay? And there are celebrities like Johnny Depp, Peter Jackson, Eddie Vatter, and Natalie Mains use their status and income to help free the West Memphis Three in 2011. Look it up. Look it up. You need to understand why this is important. And again, I'm not going to insult your intelligence by giving you by spoon feeding you. I'm just going to give you the resource. Number seven. Yikes! Activist Sean King throws shade at Kim Kardashian over Rodney Reed case. Check up on it. Number eight. Um, conservative vlogger, vlogger Candace Owens says the ideal of George Floyd as a martyr is bullshit. Check up on it. And then we have 23 year old black man shot and killed by Ohio deputy. U.S. Marshal says he was not the target. His name was Casey Goodman Jr. So Casey and Bernard are the ones that we're talking about in current events, like in this time frame right now. OK, but I want to make it bigger. I want to show you something. OK, so my request of you is this. Breathe deeply, <laughs> OK, and do your best to get out your feelings, OK, because I'm going to talk to you like a business person. I'm not going to talk to you like an activist. I'm not even going to talk to you like a sister, mom, daughter or wife of someone of a black man who's gotten slain or vice versa. That's not this conversation. I want to talk to you about money. I want to talk to you about marketing. Okay. So with that being said, remember, this is not a moral conversation. This is not about murder. This is not about who's right and who's wrong. That's not my concern. I leave that to the professionals. I do money. They can do what they want to do. All right. So with that being said, let me help you understand some things about how marketing works. Let's start with the news. The intent of the news is to make known that which is aberrant. Okay. Meaning they only find things or promote things or show things that are what we call newsworthy, which actually is code for, um, it's kind of a hard word, but ex that's exploiting. Okay. It's designed to be about the most extreme something It's either murder or car chases or embezzlement or it's almost always bad news. Okay. So let's just get that. The news is not designed for good news. It's designed to sell papers. Okay. And human nature, let me help you understand human nature is designed to survive. So we have an innate desire to know and a curiosity to understand that which that could be a threat to us. Okay. So the news is looking for fodder that will trigger you, that will make you feel fear, that will make you angry, that will have you have an emotional visceral response. That is the nature of that machine. It is not personal. It has been this way. It was built for that. It's built for that, which is aberrant, that which is extreme odd outside of the norm It's not built for good news It's built for bad news. That's the first piece. Now that's the news. Let's go to media. The way that media works with the social media or main or, 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 um, uh, mainstream media for lack of a better term, right? Media is a little different from the news. Okay. The way media is designed, it is designed to push your buttons. And let me help you understand how that works as a marketer. Marketers are trained and know that people don't buy from their heads. They buy from their feelings. Okay. That, and I want you to be look in your own life. Think about that car you bought and then you had that buyer's remorse. So you're my, <laughs> you bought the car, but then you're like, Oh, I need this car. This car is necessary. It was on sale. I got a good price. All of that is buyer's remorse. And you're fighting your natural inclination to be like rational with like, I need this car. It looks so cool. I'm going to be thought well of marketers know that marketers know that. So we purposefully contextualize stuff that elicits that primal piece in you that has you take an action. 
Okay. That is the nature of marketing. Does I want you to feel me on this? Not moral, just marketing. It, it's not even, it, hell, you do it with your kids. You know, Hey, you want this peanut butter sandwich? Clean your room. We could call that marketing. You know what I'm saying? Like we're playing to that, which you value or that, which you fear. So when you read a headline or you read a tweet or you read a blog post that has something in the title that has you click, rest assured, it has hit some emotional button that you may not even be aware of. This have you taken action that you weren't even thinking about taking. That's the nature of marketing. That is what marketing does. Good marketing doesn't look like marketing at all. It looks like it was your choice. That's good marketing. That is like effective marketing because if you believe that you did that, you will not do a refund. You will not do a return because in your own understanding, like I made that choice. This is my choice. I believe my choice. I stand by my choice, even though it was influenced. Okay. That's the nature of marketing. Clear. I'm going to pretend you're shaking your heads like, mm hmm, word, truth, Dr. V, truth. I'm pretending. That's why I make that up. Okay. So now let's bring it over to black men being murdered. Okay. <laughs> let's just bring it over to the house. Okay. Black men being murdered. I need you to understand something. All right. Let me walk it slow, God. Help me, Jesus. I should, did I tell y'all curse, cry, and pray at the same time? I hope I, ho- I, I think I should have told you that to I was setting this up. Um, so, um, let's go it's gonna sound cray cray walk away with me walk it with me walk it with me let's go back to the civil war okay let's just go back to the civil war let's just walk it real slow all right so you know the civil war happened abraham freed the slaves reconstruction happened okay now here's the thing that you may not know is that the month after i think it was may 1865 okay I have to look at my paperwork, forgive me if I'm off, but somewhere in there, right? Where the Confederate army had a, had a battle that happened after the surrender of the Confederacy to, to the other side, okay? To the Federalists. So what happens is when they had that war, that battle, it was in Texas, of course, um, a month afterward, then here's the thing you need to understand, and I need you to feel this to your bones, when the Confederacy won that, that battle in South Texas after emancipation had been done in the Confederacy's mind, they won the war. I don't know if y'all can track that and I don't have the time to go all the way in. And I don't want to get you caught up in history so hard that you have to track everything, but I need you to understand this. So I need you to imagine for a moment that you are a white man, God bless you, land owning, come with me, just pretend, and they just freed all of your free labor. And you're like, oh, hell no. Nah. How you gonna take my free labor? I, this is my birthright, okay? And they go cray cray. And so then you win a fight, say, woohoo, we won, we won the war. When you actually didn't because you had already surrendered, but that's not the point, you won the last battle, okay? So this is what happens with, God help me fix it, please help me walk it slow. This is how this looks. During Reconstruction, instead of the North that had worked before after Lincoln got dead, okay, the North, if they had honored Lincoln's intent, all right, to actually set up the social structures for 3 million free slaves after Reconstruction, we would have a different history, but they didn't. They celebrated the war heroes of the Confederacy. Do you understand that? So, you know, that, that monument around Lee, uh, um, you, um, ah, Venus, wait on it. Don't go too fast. All the monuments we fuss about. Well, those were approved by the North, by the Federalists, the people who had emancipated black people because they was trying to smooth over the upset white men in the South. And what they did was they took away their support to put in the infrastructure to protect black people from white slavers. Okay. So what that looks like in reconstruction, we have the slave codes. That means we have structures in the law (laughs) that makes it okay to hang a black man, to kill a black woman, to burn a city to the ground. 
And, 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 and so I want you to see how that works. Okay. So we have that infrastructure in place from reconstruction. So now what we're dealing with is a legalized format of murder for black men that goes all the way back to the 1800s. Now you may understand, you may know that, but I want you to understand the logic behind it. So when black people got free, and even before, but I want you to understand how it looks today. When black people got free, black, white people, white men, they created these laws about being out after dark or needing to have a letter or being able to write all kinds of stuff they know we couldn't do. Okay. No, if we, if we share a crop on their land, that means we went into debt, which means we had to work off the debt, which means it's now we're laborers, which means we're slaves again, but it's legal. Okay. So one of the things that they did, and this is important to know when black free black people started to get together with fr uh, poor white people, rich white people lost their fucking minds. They lost their shit. They're like, Oh hell no. Nah. Because what happened was when poor whites and free blacks got together, they started to elect black people into Congress. Look it up. They started elect people. And so rich white people said, Oh, we can't have this. And this is what the fuck they did. They started and hear me. God, please help me fix it. Please help me walk it slow. What they did was they started to spread rumors about how black men were raping white women and they fed the fear such that it became in frenzied that white people, white men started to lynch and murder black men. And this is the thing you need to know. They did it publicly. They showed the bodies burning. They showed the legs twitching. It's called marketing. Okay. This is how they put fear in black people to control for a hundred years until we got to civil rights. Okay. And it was all marketing. So, and it's all written down. If I had more time, I would go all the way in. Okay. But I need you to understand that what we're seeing today is a historical practice that was put in place to keep black people oppressed. And the way they do it is through marketing. So, now that we got that piece in, let's come to present day. All right. We have people like, and this, and this is not a slam and this is not smoke. I just want to walk it slow. We have people like Candace Owens who no one really knew before, but when she started talking smack, real smack about George Floyd, George Floyd, her numbers went up to the millions. Check up on it. Just check up on it. If you think about Kim Kardashian, no shade, no drama. She decides to go get, go become a lawyer. And, now, and her platform is police reform. So now she's flying in to see Reed before he gets executed. She's flying. She's, she's, she's campaigning for, um, to Trump to exonerate different people on death row. Right. She's speaking up for Bernard, all that kind of stuff. Right now, here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Sean King, whom I love. I'm like, go brother, go. Sean is throwing shade at Kim. Okay. And that gives him a certain kind of notoriety because of her level of visibility. Okay. And I'm not suggesting it's bad. I'm just helping you understand how marketing works. Right? So if we just take that activist, that influencer and that celebrity, just take those three, let's just take those three. Okay. And say, and I'm saying this in all love, no hate. Honestly, this is, this is this money right now. Okay. When Kim Kardashian is advocating for black men to not die and her husband is advocating to be the president who has to be a black man. You want to start noticing the timing of things. You may have seen it. Have you noticed that Kanye always says something kind of cray cray before he drops an album? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that Ice Cube, Ice T, Lil Wayne, they all go Trumpish, do something crazy when they're doing, releasing a new album? Have you noticed that whenever a celebrity wants to get free press, they, they have an affair <laughs> or they come out of rehab or they break up with somebody like you want, but then on that, on the swell of that media, they released a new album. They released a new movie. You know, if you think about Tiffany Haddish and, um, common whom I love, no hate. You want to start noticing the timing. Okay. Well, who has a movie coming out? Who like, start looking at that? That's called marketing. It's marketing. Okay. So when you have someone like Kim Kardashian, who is advocating for black men to not be executed. All right it starts to reform her in the imagination 
of the nation of the world. Because if y'all remember back when she and Kanye got married, we didn't like her. You see what I'm saying? In fact, Sean King didn't like her around the, the Reed brothers, the, the, the Reed guys. Be, um, she, he threw shade. Okay. And that was 2019. But now he just did a post saying she's doing real work. Do you see what I'm saying? So now he's aligning himself with her brand. It's subtle, but it's marketing. And I want you to be very clear. No judgment, no condemnation. No, not, none of that. But I need you to understand that people build platforms, reinvent themselves, um, get known, elevate their statue, statue through the deaths of black people. And it's historical. It's historical. It's not new. It's just recycled. And so there are people, and I, to be fair, I'm not even, conf, I'm not confident that the people who are benefit, I don't think Candace Owens knows that she's um, perpetuating a history of violence against black men. I think she just wants to make money. Quite frankly, I think she, just wants, she wants to sell books. And she says the most provocative things she can. It's like Cardi B says provocative things, but she says it in terms of money making. When it comes to her politics, she's very clear about what she's about. Candace Owens, the diamond, diamond and silk, um, the attorney general of, of, of Kentucky, they're, they're, they're doing something different. They're protecting their assets. They're, um, they're leveraging their platform for more stature, which AKA translates into more money, more business deals, more book deals, more endorsements. It's a whole thing. But, but so, and you don't see that because what you're left with is feeling like, oh my God, the police have killed another black man. Ah! And that's what they want you to feel. So let's take, let's go, let's go, let's, let's walk it slow. Let's look at, um, Bernard. Okay. Brandon Bernard. Okay. If you look at how it's contextualized in the media, AKA marketing. Okay. You want to notice how one of the headlines said, um, 23 year old black, young black man, listen to the words, 23 year old. So now we're playing on his youth. Okay. Um, young, we let you reiterate that he's young, black man or black male. We know who he is shot in the back three times by police while carrying a subway sandwich. Can you hear the frame of that? Can you see how that context would have you be like, oh, hell no. Nah. And can you see how that would like raise your temperature? Like this is some bullshit. Can you see how that would provoke you? You see how that works? And it's designed to do just that. It's designed to do that. Now, what they don't say is that, okay, I'm sorry, I get my men right. That was, that was Casey. Casey was, car <laughs> Casey was carrying the, um, Casey Goodman was carrying the subway sandwich. Well, I can do that one. Let me do that one. Then I'll go back to, Br to Brenda, Brandon. So with Casey, they're saying he's a 20 year, you know, everything I just said. What they don't say in the headline is that he was carrying a gun. It was a registered gun, but it's still a gun. That's not in the headline. They don't say 20 year old young black man carrying a registered gun is shot by the police in the back because he thought he waved at it. That's not in the headline because that's not going to sell. That's not going to get you upset. But if we go, oh, here's another black man who gets shot. Can you see how you're being manipulated? And I don't want you to hear it. God, help me fix it. I don't, I think everything they're saying is valid. But I'm an educated consumer. So then I have to go read to find out, oh, damn, he had a gun. So now his case is going to be really hard to prove because the, guy, the police can say, I was, I was doing it in self-defense. But that's, and now they're, so if you watch how they build it, you'll start to see how it's designed to keep you on the edge of your seat, keep you in an emotional distress and keep you in your feelings. So you can't really make choices. You can just react. Okay. So let me go back up to, um, Brandon. Okay. So there was a lot of flurry about trying to save Brandon in his la in the last weeks of his life. All right. Before he was executed. And, and if you listen to how they contextualize it, the, how they frame it, they said, Oh, when he, with all the things he did was when he was young, when he was a child, he didn't know any better. He was around a lot of bad people. Look it up. You can read it yourself. Don't take my word for it, please. For the love of God and all things, holy, check it out. Have your own revelation. 
Don't trust me. Trust yourself. Read. Okay. Think. Think through it. Here's the thing that's really frustrating to me about Brandon Bernard's case. Yes, he was 17, 17, 18. I think it was 18 because he was legal because he could be put in the, with the big people. Okay. But they didn't tell you, and this is hard to, it's, it's, it's hurtful to me. It's not part of the national discourse. It's in there if you look for it. This is deep for me. This is what they said. Turns out that Brandon actually set a car on fire with a woman in the trunk who was still alive. That's his crime. Now, he was an accessory to other parts of that, but he lit the car on fire with a woman in the car, in the trunk, who's alive. So that meant she burnt to death. That's not in the headlines. No one's talking about that. Everyone's saying it's unfair that Obama should have done it. John King was saying Obama could have exonerated them when he did and he didn't. But I'm like, well, hold on. If that was my daughter, if that was your son who was in the trunk of the car that he burnt, I don't mind him dying. Now, I'm not suggesting I agree with, I'm not agreeing with anything, but I'm saying as a human being, that is not, that's a thing. You see what I'm saying? And so, what, what is happening? Oh, what my point is that it's, um, it's important to have context around these things. It's important. Otherwise, you will get manipulated by the media. And they will make money off of you. If you look at the articles that I'm sending out in this, in this particular episode, you'll see that some people are raising money off of the signs for Black Lives Matter. They're selling them. Artists, are, celebrities are making their version of Cardi B does, Billy Irish does. That, that, that's for a good cause. It's for women who are brutalized by the police. And I'm here for it. Be very clear. I'm here for it all day, every day. Okay. But what I want you to understand is if you don't know the whole story, then you're left in an emotional disarray. You're upset and you feel like people are against you. There, there are more white people killed by the cops than black people. And, I'm, and that's not, that's not a bad, that's not good or bad, but we don't hear about it. That's all I'm saying. And I don't, and that doesn't be very clear. That does not justify killing black people. That be very clear. I'm not saying that I, I march with you. I'm here for it, but I want, but I march because I'm aware, not because I'm reacting and we end up losing ground because we react and we build a case that ignores the facts and those facts have consequence. And here's the thing I want to say, and I'll wrap up God. I'm gonna wrap it up. I won't hold it long. Is this, we want justice. Okay. And I'm here for it. So hear me when I tell you, I'm on the same page. The thing that we don't account for is we want justice our way. We don't talk about black on black crime. We don't talk about black men beating the fuck out of black women. We don't talk about trans women being sh shot and raped and killed. We don't talk about that. We talk about white people doing white people shit that they've been doing since we got to this motherfucker. Okay. I'm not suggesting it's right. I'm saying that we get emotional and we lock in on one piece and we get very, very right about it. And we don't see all the pieces that create the mosaic that justifies the action. I'm not suggesting that it's right. I'm suggesting we're not always informed because we're in our feelings. And I don't mind. Uh, look, I don't mind losing an argument. I don't mind being wrong. I really, 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 really don't. I don't but I refuse to be used. I refuse to let people push my fucking buttons and make me take actions out of my feelings while they're building wealth machines that leave us out. While we're marching, they're making money. Literally, they're building infrastructure that leaves you out. And if you don't get yourself oriented around capitalism, and get your get an understanding about how to make your own money that doesn't require that your body be there that's based on your knowledge instead of your skill and your time based on your lived experience you're going to be enslaved you're going to be part of a caste system that's seven generations deep okay so i'm bringing this word to you because i need you to understand that they're playing you they're pimping you they are using you and they're distracting you so that they can build out all kinds of 
infrastructure and systems that don't have you included because you're not looking over there. You're looking over here. You're looking at how you feel. I'm going to tell you one of the biggest transformations I ever did that made the biggest difference in my peace and my money and in my life is I took my, my attention off of racism and I put my attention on white supremacy. That is so preach God. I don't even know if that's going to land, but I took my attention off of racism because racism is about me. And I put my attention on white supremacy because white supremacy is about them. I want to understand what they're doing. I want to understand what they're thinking. I want to understand what the fuck they're planning. That's where my attention is because I want to understand how come Trump is elongating this whole presidency. And it's not because of the presidency. He's just getting money from his donors to pay off his debts. If you look at it, you can see it. You know, he's trying to set it up such that he can handle all of his money concerns by virtue of positioning himself as being used by the system. And people are buying into it. His, his base is sending millions and millions of dollars to his funds. Do you understand? But if you don't see that, you'll think that he's just crazy. No, he's strategic. It's business. It is so business. It is business in its purest form. Business has no relationship to morality. It has some relationship to monetizing. It has a relationship to winning. So if you don't understand that, you'll, take, you'll make it emotional. It's not emotional. It's strategy. Blame it on the streets of me. I totally understand it. Okay? So when I talk about people building platforms, it's not a slam. If anything, it's a strategic move. Strategy always trumps emotion. Strategy always wins. OK, so don't please don't hear my word as if I'm saying something's negative about these strategies. I acknowledge Candace Owens for being a savvy businesswoman, just the way I acknowledge Cardi B and, and Magna Stallion for being amazing businesswomen. They have my respect. That, and, I, and that doesn't mean I don't even fuck with Candace because she's not somebody I will follow. But I love her business model because it worked. She doesn't she doesn't have she doesn't traffic in respectability politics. She traffics in influence. She wants to, she wants to get as much of a reaction out of people. And she says what she needs to do to get that. You see what I'm saying? So don't hate the player, hate the game. <laughs> that may be the best way to say it. And so I guess what I want you to, my main thing when, when I'm, I'm committed that you take away from this particular episode is don't let them use you. Don't let them use you. Read up on it. Check up on it. Don't let the headlines fool you. OK, read more than one article about any one thing. Read one to three, three to five. So you can see Oh, and you can put all the pieces together. OK, so you understand what's happening and you're not left with um, the, 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 they, 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 they count on us to be basic. They count on us to be stupid. They count on us not to read. They count on us not to think. They count on that. And when we get upset, we stop thinking. I know I do. So I have to manage myself, given how passionate I am. <laughs> I'm like, okay, let me call my mother before I curse everybody out. Okay. But once I'm clear, I get about my paper. I'm about my pay. I am. I I'm about my coins. I'm about my bags because I know that the great equalizer in America is not race it's money. And if you don't get yourself oriented around being an entrepreneur and making your own money, manifesting your own millions, then nobody else can copy until you get yourself oriented around that. You will be a slave. I said my piece. I'm falling back. I'm falling back. I'm falling back. God, I'm falling back. I'm falling back. I'm surrendering the mic. All right, everybody. Know that you love beyond measure, my sweet sister and brothers in success and the people who love us. If you were fed by this word, this life giving word, this life affirming word, please share it. This is a profound conversation. I try to keep it around 30 minutes so it's not long, but it's deep. It's thick. So don't be skin. Don't be st don't be stingy. Share it out. Okay. Tag people. Push it out. Leave comments. Do your thing. All right. Um, I want to make sure I let you know that I'm doing some really hot things in the hot mess millionaire Facebook group. Make sure you join it. It's where I'm going to be doing a lot of my, I'm going to be putting out new offers. I'm going to be doing a share your shit Saturdays where you can promote your things. <laughs> you know? I'll be doing a um, millionaire making love seat once a month on Fridays. Okay. So I'm telling you, I know the hot mess millionaire series is, is out there, but I'm still building. I'm still training. I'm still educating. So come be with me. I'll be here on Mondays because this is where I do my social thing, but I do my money thing 
over in Hot Mess Millionaire Facebook group. That's where I do all my money teachings. So if you want access to my multi-million dollar brain trust, you need to join the Hot Mess Millionaire Facebook group because that's where I am. And there's some free gifts in there and blah, 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 blah. Make sure you answer the three short questions so we know you're a real person and not a robot. Okay. And um, that's all I got for now. Know that you're loved. Thank you for listening to my word. Thank you for hearing me out. And thank you for your patience. Okay. It's not a simple conversation. It could be remarkably inflammatory, but I trust you as my truth tellers that you hear my intention is to empower you in a world that's rapidly changing. And a lot of times as black people, we're never educated about the, um, the underpinnings of how money works. We're only taught to get money. We're not taught to strategize and understand how marketing, the news, celebrity platforms, how all this comes into play so that you become their worker horse, their workhorse instead of them becoming yours. And I want you to be the top and not the bottom. Okay. I want you as the head and not the tail. Okay. You are God wrapped in flesh. You are the, you are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the one we've been waiting for. And I love you in that agape way with my whole heart. I'm proud of you. And I thank you for allowing me in your ear. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Know that you're loved. And, um, that's all for now. I love you. (laughs) This is Dr. Venus. Goodbye for now.